Baldur's Gate 3 has worked its way into my heart in a way that very few other games ever have. And with the game's full release just recently having its first birthday, I knew I had to do something special to celebrate. At least, something I thought was special. You see, Larian, the folks who made Baldur's Gate, release these fun little statistics every once in a while. And, as you can see, this one says that only 464 players have completed Honor Mode, the toughest difficulty in the whole game. That's a very exclusive club. So, when I saw that, I started working on it right away. Where I went wrong though is that that specific statistic is from nine months ago, when Honor Mode was still very new. The most recent stats they posted show that now over 140,000 people have beaten it. So, at this point, it's less about being part of a small elite group and more about not being left behind. Usually, I'd add my own rules to a challenge, but Honor Mode has plenty of its own so the only thing I'm going to add is that I have to reach max level before the playthrough is over. That way I can't just end the game in Act 2 and pretend like that counts. Before we get started, let's play a little game. Take a quick guess how many tries this will take me. Granted, I'm not very good at this game, but I do usually learn from my mistakes. Got your number? Alright, well, if you're wrong, you gotta like and subscribe. Deal? What's that? I, I, I can't, I can't hear you. I'm just gonna assume it's a deal. Okay, enough talk, let's talk more. <laughs> So there's some very important choices to make right off the bat. What race, class, and genitals are we gonna have? Oh yeah, you can change your genitals. It's pretty cool. I decided to be a dragonborn because they seem like they'd be pretty tough. Then for class, I chose to be a monk. The cool thing about monks is that they basically have the extra attack ability right at the start. You get to attack and then do an unarmed attack as a bonus action, and I think that'll help a lot as we go. Not to mention, monk is arguably the most powerful class in the game from start to finish, so yeah. Feels like like an easy choice. Then we just need a name, and for character number one, I went with Dumpus. It's got some power to it. As for our guardian, I just clicked random until I got one that I liked. But that's pretty much it for prep. Let's get into the actual game. I won't lie to you guys, I was very nervous for this challenge. But hey, if a hundred thousand some people can do it, then I probably can. I looted the starting room, freed us from this poor guy's head, and then met Lazel. Lazel is one of my favorite companions, and my love from the I killed every NPC in Baldur's Gate 3 video. You should check that out. I actually just recently put all three parts into one video with some on-screen director's commentary. Self-promo aside, we fought these imps and progressed until we found Shadowheart, one of my other favorite companions. These two together are especially fun, so expect to see plenty of them as we go on. I made it to the helm of the Nautiloid and didn't bother stopping to fight Zalk or the Mind Flayer. I didn't have enough dick to reach the transponder, but Lazel gave me the push I needed to get there. After crash landing, I picked Sharp back up, hit level 2, killed some TikTokers, grabbed Astarian, or I guess he grabbed me, killed this injured Mind Flayer for the easy XP, and then managed to peacefully free Lazel. I got Gale as well, though he's not coming with us, and then we checked out these ruins. I always start this off by breaking this thing to kill the two guys standing under it and then jump the other two, and this time was no exception. I took the fight inside and though it did get pretty ugly, we pulled it off. I had a very near miss with the sarcophagus trap, but then went on to beat these skeletons much more successfully than I would have otherwise assumed. And hey, here's Withers! He's um... He's an ugly bastard. But with that all done, I think it's time I go visit the Emerald Grove. There's a ruckus outside the grove, and me and my buddy stepped in to help. We all came out with just a few cuts and bruises, but then inside the walls, I watched Aridin get rocked. I never get tired of that. Now look, I can't sit and talk too long about everything I did in this playthrough, because unfortunately, spoiler alert, it doesn't go all the way, and I want to get to how it ended. But here's the Spark Notes version up to that point. I sent Will to camp, killed these goblins, fought off the harpies, finally had my first night of sleep, got jump scared by Raphael, watched Edwin die, killed the owl bear, found Scratch and then Carlac right after, killed the paladins of Tyr, fought some gnolls, saved Benrin and Floric from Joaquin's rest, and oh my god, so much more. But like I said, I can't mention it all because I want this video to end someday, so let's get to where things went wrong. I was at level 4 and feeling pretty confident, so I went down to Auntie Ethel's swamp. She had killed Joel and Demir, so after I jumped Gandrell and murdered him in cold blood, I told Mayrina about Ethel's transgressions. Ethel returned the favor by sicking her red caps on me, and that was fine. Then I went downstairs, through the door, and made an awful decision. Ethel has some slave folk, the Whispering Masks, I think they're called. Usually I'd kill them, but I wanted to save resources, so I just scooted on by them, and that would be fine. 
except what I didn't know is that once you reach Ethel, if the masks are still around, they'll join her in the already pretty tough fight. In the words of our lord and savior Jeff Probst, I was outwitted, outplayed, and outlasted. That being said, I did learn some valuable lessons in this playthrough. First, kill the fucking masks. Second, I shouldn't be too afraid to long rest, but hey, I wasn't expecting to win on the first try, I'm happy with how far I made it. We do have to make another character, and this time I'm going with a tiefling. Tieflings are my favorite race to play as, not only because they look cool, but they've also got some decent perks. Adding on to the name of Dumpus, this here is Dumpulius. He's also a monk, and he's blue. I wanted to make Dumpus my guardian, but you can't make dragonborn guardians. The fuck is that about? Well instead, I tried my best to remake Kathy's character from the chat GPT plays Baldur's Gate 3 video. I don't have the mods on now, so so this is the best I could do. On the ship this time, I tried fighting Zulk, but it was clearly a losing battle, so I dipped. I got the gang back, myself, Shart, Astarian, and Lazel, and did pretty much everything in the same order. Murdered everyone in the ruins, helped the grove, although this time, I had to kill Arca and Memnos because they attacked me when I tried to save Saza. I just wanted to kill her myself, guys, jeez. All was well and good until, again, at level 4, the run was in dire straits. You see, I confronted the Gith Yankee outside the mountain pass. I was planning on playing along with their requests, and all I really wanted was some XP. But when I lied to Voss, he didn't fall for our tricks, and he ordered the Gith to attack us. Astarian just barely escaped with a potion of invisibility, but this was another good lesson to learn. I didn't even know that could happen. I came back and got my revenge on the survivors, though. Eventually, though, I got back around to Ethel's swamp, and I was determined to bring her down. She slipped away into her basement, and after handling the red caps, I chased after her. Now, I wasn't going to make the same mistake that I did last time, so I I of course stopped to kill the masks. The fight went fine, but I was honestly terrified to face Ethel. I got some sleep and then ripped off the band-aid. And you know what? She wasn't here. What the fuck? Where is she? Oh, there she is. That was weird. Anyways, it's fighting time. I should probably stop doing this at level 4 and wait until level 5 so that I have extra attack, but with a clutch guiding bolt from Shadowheart, I was able to pull out the win. That feels great. Now we're at least guaranteed to make it further than we did on our first run, which I'd most certainly call progress. I took the gang to the goblin camp next, where we were brain assaulted by the absolute. We'll, uh, we'll get to the absolute way later. For now, though, I've got plenty of work to do here. I picked off a few stinkers on my way in and then got past the guards inside the temple. I was afraid I would get attacked if I didn't let Priestess Gut brand me, so I let it happen, and then I took her to her room, and I... <laughs> I was gonna say, and I freaked it. What the fuck? That's not even written down. I took her to her room and put her... <laughs> Sorry, the freaked it things, really. I don't know where that came from. And then took her to her room to put her down away from prying eyes. I went after the second goblin leader next, Minthara. I like Minthara, and you can knock her out and she'll come back in act two, but I was just so nervous that I totally forgot and ended up killing her. Whoops, sorry lady. That did bring me to level five, which is when your party gets a serious upgrade, that extra attack ability I keep yapping about. I slept before confronting the third and final leader of the goblin camp, and that night I started turning into a mind flayer. Lazelle wanted to mercy kill me and herself, but I talked her down. Then, in a dream, I saw Elara Firebrand. Damn, I'm tall, I didn't even realize. Draw Ragslin was on the agenda the next day, and man, I gotta tell you, that shit was easy peasy. I was expecting a much more intense battle, but my team barely got scratched. That was a pretty big, potentially dangerous, mind you, boost to my ego. I wiped out pretty much all of the remaining goblins next, both inside and outside, and then popped back into the grove to brag. I mean, to tell them of my good deeds. And that meant it was celebration time. Now, I may have bumped uglies with Lazelle, but you best believe I'm always down to party with Shardy. Halston jump scared me, as per usual, and though I'm going to clear the Underdark before the mountain pass, I did stop in quickly to grab some good monk gear from Lady Esther. Like I said though, it's the Underdark for us next. I almost lost the run right away to this spectator. I've gotta get my head in the game, man. I can't be messing around like that. The Bulette, still don't know if I'm saying that right, also kicked my ass, so I wound down that night with Lazelle. Well, let's be honest, there's not much winding down going on. Here. The next day was full of killing. The Dwergar, Philro and the Hook Horrors, this idiot that I pushed into the water, his friends, some stragglers, and even my eyeball. Thanks, Philo. I cleared out the rest of the Dwergar, reached level 6, got my ass kicked by Nier, that was ugly, and then managed to win a very, very long and rough battle against Grimm. That was pretty much it for the Underdark, which just left me with the Mountain Pass remaining, as far as Act 1 goes at least. I killed every living, breathing creature I came across, simply trying to gain as much XP as physically possible before 
for Act 2. The crush was fun, lots of fighting, lots of killing, and we even hit level 7. And then when I faced Wargaz, it was really rough, but I did clutch up. After finishing the mountain pass off by killing these Death Shepherds and their ghoul buddies, we ran into Elminster who delivered Mistra's mission to Gale. Bummer. The game forced us to sleep before entering the Shadow Cursed Lands, but in the morning, it was finally time. We are officially in Act 2. I majorly panicked when I accidentally ran right into Karnis, but by the grace of one of the many gods, I guess, we were able to stay hidden and avoided the fight. I made a beeline for Last Light, and though Jahira was suspicious of us right away, she relented when Maul stepped in to vouch for me. I did a little socializing inside the inn, before heading upstairs to get my protection spell from Isabel. But then we were attacked by Marcus, the fake flaming fist. This fight was fine, well, for me. They beat the dog shit out of Isabel and ran off with her mangled body, which broke her spell over the inn and turned all the Harpers into shadow cursed people. I really thought this was the end. I thought there was no chance we were gonna win this incredibly lopsided battle, but with help from Jahira, we, by some miracle, pulled it off. Hey man, if I could survive that, I could survive anything. Or so I thought. I went down under the inn to kill the mean locks down there. There were a lot more of them than I remembered, and with just coming out of a big fight, I was not prepared for the battle to come. I thought this would be quick. I thought this would be easy, but the mean locks are, well, mean. They kept paralyzing us, which is some bullshit, frankly, but when there's literally nothing I can do, there was nothing I could do. We got bullied, brutalized, and this, of all ways, is the way my second run ended. I was distraught. That run was the golden child. It just seemed to have so much potential, and then it was all lost in such a strange encounter. I didn't realize mean locks were so dangerous, but uh, lesson learned, I guess. For my next character, I got some face and hair mods because this time I was gonna use a little girl power. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dumpuli Asana, a human monk who is about to have a rough time. If the last run was the golden child, this is the red-headed stepchild. I took Dumpulius as our guardian and got started. On the ship this time, I used the Nautiloid tanks to try and blow up Zulk, but it was less than successful. It's okay, the game brought me back to life after the ship crashed, and hey, Lazel Spirit is here. Sweet, that's actually kind of a nice way to get her on my team earlier than usual. Even with her though, we got beat up pretty bad from these intellect devourers, we all nearly died against the adventurers inside the ruins, and didn't have a great time with the skeletons either. Honestly, I just wasn't feeling it this run. I probably should have taken a break after losing Dumpulius cause I just so badly wanted to get back to act 2 so I could get closer to beating this challenge that I was being kinda reckless. Gale got folded up like a damn family guy character, I had an awful fight against the owl bear, I even had terrible roles with trying to befriend Scratch, and I love dogs. It just seemed like we were holding on by a thread for this entire playthrough. But everything came to a head when I approached the Gith Yankee again. I was so close to level 5, I just wanted a tiny bit of XP from lying to them, but I totally ignored the lesson I learned earlier and the conversation turned into a fight and it did not end well for me. It's okay, this run was pretty miserable, I had some bad luck, but it was mostly my fault. I took a little time away from the game after that one just so I could reset my brain. Alright, I gave it a few days, and I'm feeling much better, more motivated, and ready to get her done. For my fourth character, I went with a female high elf named Dumpulius Annabeth. The major difference here being that she's not a monk like my previous attempts. This time, I went with a paladin. Paladin is my personal favorite class, and the sole reason why I said that monk is arguably the most powerful class, as paladins are also ridiculously strong. Dumpulius Anna is my guardian, of course, and I am ready to take this game by the balls. It's getting really hard not to repeat myself, but everything went pretty well in the early parts of this run. The only sad thing that happened was that Scratch attacked me because I used the friend's cantrip on him, but I didn't kill him, I just knocked him out. Sorry little man, I just wanted to be friends. Flind gave me a scare similar to my run-in with the Gith on my Dumpulius run, but Gale got out and saved the day. I also killed the Zentarim and took their smoke powder barrels, because I assumed they might be necessary later. Also quick tip, uh, make sure you loot Joaquin's rest the day after you rescue Floric, because this place has so much camp supplies. I tried to lie to the gith again. I know, I know, I said at the start of the video that I learned from my mistakes, but hey, I can't fail every time, right? Is that right? Because at this point, I actually don't know. Anyways, this time I was smart enough to leave Astarian hiding off screen so that he could revive us if we ran into trouble. That proved to be very necessary because we got steamrolled by the gith. I wanted revenge, but I went to sleep first. I guess Lazel doesn't approve of sleeping though. That is kind of funny. And hey, Scratch is here. I'm so glad he came to camp. I went back to the gith Yankee, but this time used a secret 
secret weapon that I keep forgetting exists. I tossed the iron flask, and spoiler alert, it's got a spectator inside of it. My enemy is my enemy's friend, after all. Wait, that's that's not right. Oh shit, it's right. The spectator just decided it was be mean to Dumpy Day and started attacking us instead of the Gith. Not cool, man. I freed you. I was in severe danger of losing the run to this dynamic duo that I unintentionally created of Beretha and the spectator, so I ran for my life. When I got to camp, I could see that the battle between those two picked up, though. Place your bets, folks. Who do you got? And it is... The Spectator! Yeah, that makes sense. I brought my friends back, and we killed the Spectator. Squad wipe. Speaking of squad wipe, I also destroyed all of the goblin leaders and their little goblings. I made Kissy Kissy with Shadowheart that night, and then dealt with Act 1.5 just like we did before. I had a pretty tough experience with the crash, though. I got absolutely robbed against the war guys. Gale hit them with a lightning bolt to start the battle, and somehow that got my squad surprised? Which means we all missed out on an entire turn. I barely managed to sneak away with my life, I revived everyone, and we had a much better chance without that bullshittery. But I made a huge mistake after the fight. I just wanted to loot a body right outside of the room, but Lazel thought I was abandoning our mission to enter the astral prism, and she attacked me. I knocked her out, but there wasn't much hope of turning her back. I talked to my guardian, but Lazel was still my enemy when I returned. Well, sorry Lazel. That's all done, I'm off to act two again. I took the Grimforge path this time because it's a lot closer to Last Light. Speaking of Last Light, I kept Isabel on her feet against Marcus, and the Inn, the Harpers, and myself all survived. I opted to skip over the mean locks this time, and instead followed after the Harpies to go do battle with Karnis. He's much less scary when you have some meat shields. I mean meat shields. I mean, yeah, I meant meat shields. It was a pretty good fight, but his backup is pretty lackluster, so it's an unfair matchup for him. I freed Dolly, and then that night, Dumpuliasana popped into my dream. I ran into Roland the next day while he was getting jumped. I, I totally knew he was there. That was not a, that was not a complete and utter coincidence, I swear. Silly wizard boy aside, I have some thorns to take out. I was pretty afraid that Garen Goth was gonna delete my team, but the fight went surprisingly well. You kinda just have to ignore her until the visages are gone, and then she's essentially helpless. One thorn down. Okay, this is mean, but also kinda funny. But when I got to the waning moon, I wrote in my notes, Hi, you big fat fuck. <laughs> Jeez, not sure what was going on that day. I did a little drinking, assuming it wouldn't end well, but I kept getting good rolls and actually ended up just overfilling him. I honestly could not believe that that worked. Second thorn down. I killed his friends, I killed the shadows in the mason building, and then decided that instead of risking my life to convince Malice to kill himself, I would just nuke him. It didn't finish the job, but with him hurt and his nurses obliterated, he was much more reasonable. I also helped Halson rescue Thaniel. My run almost ended when I accidentally ran into the shambling mound and his little buddies, but like so many times before, I survived, got my squad back, and returned to finish the job. I was running out of things to do after that, so I figured it was a good time to head into Moonrise. And look who's alive! And what's happening to my frames? Holy dude, this is awful. I went to the basement where I saved Minthara from her captors, and then talked my way out of the tower with her. I went back to free the prisoners, killed the warden, and rode back with them to Last Light. You know, I'm not a huge fan of Roland, but he was kind of growing on me this time around. We're making progress through Act 2, so let's take that good progress to the Thorn Mausoleum. Under the mausoleum is the ever so controversial Gauntlet of Shar. I fought some Justiciers, some more Justiciers, and then got the jump on Balthazar. I probably could have utilized flesh before killing them, but hey, can't go back now. The next day, I got started on the Gauntlet Trials. Remember how I breezed through them in the Every NPC video? Yeah, it was a lot harder this time. I did them though, and then popped in to gamble with your gear. I was hoping I could smooth talk him into killing his Maragon allies, but I think failed pretty bad and they attacked. I honestly had no chance, but I did some damage before I got out of there and then I basically just kept reviving my team, throwing them at your gear, and eventually it got the job done. Honor mode is just so silly. Speaking of silly, folks at home, I need you to pay attention to this part. It's unbelievable. This run hasn't been perfect, but we were doing well. That is, until I was struck down by pure bullshit. What? Dude, what what am I supposed to do? <laughs> this stupid fucking game. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't overestimate myself. I didn't make a mistake and overcommit. I didn't start some battle accidentally. I just simply got killed by a glitch. A glitch. Sometimes life just isn't fair, and there's not much you can do about it. I consider just continuing dishonorably, but I think enemies lose their legendary actions if you do that, and if that's the case, then I wouldn't really have been beating honor mode. So I sucked up my pride, I buried my frustration, and I deleted the save. If that doesn't earn a sub, I, I don't know what else a man can do. I 
really liked the way that run went, and I was sad that it ended like that, so I made my next character to be the edgier version of Dumpulius Annabeth, this time being Dumpulius Annabethina. This has got to be the run. Not just because I'm depressed and out of patience after that run, but because I'm out of space to name my characters. I mean, the names can only be so long. As far as this run goes, I planted my feet, gritted my teeth, and caught all the way up to where I was before. I did things pretty identically, though I did save Lazel this time, so I guess there's a little positivity in there somewhere. I wasn't naive enough to think the game would be fair this time, so I didn't put my entire team on the elevator. And guess what? It happened again. Imagine if I had just assumed it would work, if I just trusted the game, and then I lost all my progress again. This is actually pretty frustrating, and apparently it's happened to other people too. Larian, I'm wagging my finger at you. I eventually fixed it, I don't even know how, but my team and I were able to make it to the Shadowfell. I was pretty on edge, because I was afraid I wouldn't be able to convince Shart to not kill the Night Song, and I was not intent on letting her do it. And that's exactly what happened. I failed all my rolls, and Shadowheart was pissed. But just then, I had a potentially amazing idea. I switched to Lazel, took the Spear of Night from Shart's inventory, don't even know why I brought the fucking thing, and threw it off the cliff. Without the Spear, Shart relented and freed Aelin without a fight. I've said it at least once or twice now, but I genuinely cannot believe that worked. But we are not out of the fire yet. Oh no, we are out of the fire and into the bigger fire. You see, now we actually gotta deal with the people at Moonrise. But I'm so close to level 9. I made some pit stops first, did some murdering, and barely was able to hit level 9 before heading to the tower. I tried to steal myself as best I could, and we approached the final battle. Zarel told me she wanted to, how you say, canoodle me? Weird. Also weird is how dang good this fight went for me. We actually kind of bodied these guys. It was like uncomfortably easy. I wasn't going to let my ego take hold though. I know there's still plenty of horrors to come. We headed to the top of the tower where we had our second battle. The main objective for this one was just to get Kethric to retreat as fast as possible. My first round was pretty eh. In round two, Astarian popped Kethric just enough for him to run away. With him gone, the rest of this fight is kind of a joke. But we've got a large leap to make next. A very scary, dangerous leap. And that leap is right into the heart of this place. Once you go in here, there's no coming out until you've beaten Catherick for good. So, you'd best believe I was feeling shaky. I didn't want to let myself be consumed by it though, and I managed to save both Zevlor and Mizoro. As for the rest of the fighting, though I may have missed out on a little XP, I didn't want to go risking my life for no good reason. So, this is it. I descended into Catherick's arena and walked in with my head held high. If I'm gonna die here, I'm gonna go down swinging. First though, we see for the first time other than the images the Absolute shows us back in Act 1, Gortash and Orin. They've got a plan to control the Absolute, and to do so, they need the Astral Prism. Well, it's a good thing for them that I brought it right to their doorstep. Myself and Ketherick had a little back and forth, but talk is cheap, it's action time. I had enough foresight to keep Astarian in the shadows, and he was able to free Aelin. Then, myself and Lazel really started laying into Ketherick. We got him near death, and then Astarian hit him once to finish the job. Pretty easy, right? I mean, what was I so afraid of? Well, <laughs> that was just the appetizer, if you can even call it that. You see, Catherick serves a god by the name of Merkel, and Merkel is not happy that we've defeated his chosen. So he pops in to handle us himself. Lazel says it best. I'm not exactly fluent in the Gith language, but I think that means damn. Merkel is ridiculously strong and his legendary actions are really good. He's truly a threat like none other we've yet encountered. I had a starry in silence, Merkel, but I don't really think that helped. Then this Mind Flayer jerk stunned me, which means I'll miss my next turn. Aelin landed a decent shot, but only one. The Necromites really wanted Lazel dead, so I knew I'd have to take them out fast if I were to pull this off. With a scroll of chain lightning, Shark killed almost every one of them. Merkel then very quickly confirmed my fears as he laid out a starry in one single sweep. Effectively taking him out of the fight given how far from the rest of us he was. My heart was pretty much in my knees at this point, and I guess Aelin got taken over or something because she ran up and finished Astarian off. Gee, thanks Aelin, you're such a great help. Shadowheart used my last scroll of chain lightning on Merkel, which hurt him pretty bad, and finished off the intellect devourer surrounding him. I wasn't aware at this point that Merkel has a thing called Merkel's Presence, which essentially means that you can't heal characters that are too close to him. So I was pretty lost when this heal didn't 
didn't have any effect on my teammates. Merkel took another swing, this time at Lazelle and I, and we were in rough shape after. I finally actually landed some decent hits on him, but at this point, I felt like it was too little too late. I was pretty convinced I had lost, so I turned Lazelle invisible and had her start running away. I'll have to go up the elevator and recuperate. Shart was trying to do some damage, but I still didn't know yet that she couldn't heal me. We got really lucky when he missed his attack on Aelin, but we were still in hot water. Then, I had an idea. I took the Nautiloid tanks and smoke powder bombs I had been holding onto and placed them all around me. Sure, I'd go down, but Merkel was coming with me. On Shark's turn, I blew it all up. See you later, Merkel. But it wasn't enough. He took some damage, but he was still on his feet, and I no longer was. I couldn't get myself back up either, still in his bone chill AoE. Merkel knocked Aelin, and I was very confident that I would lose if I didn't escape. Thankfully, Lazel had reached the door. Too bad it doesn't open. That's right, there's no way out. Once this fight starts, there's no escaping until Merkel is dead. I feel like somewhere inside I knew that, but I chose to ignore it. Shart wasn't able to do much to him on her turn, and even worse, there was an army of Necromites running up to Merkel to sacrifice themselves to heal him. I have lost. There's just simply no coming back from this, but I won't quit yet. Shart, with some invisibility, got close enough to resurrect me with a scroll of Revivify. That's right, I know how to say it now. It didn't matter much though, because the Necromites knocked me right back down. Shadowheart went down on Merkel's next turn, but I still had a hidden Lazelle remaining. She got close enough to throw some potions my way, and though I wasn't at full strength, I was much better off than I was before. I had her go invisible again, and then we both got as far away from Merkel as possible, just to catch our breath. Merkel then ended Shadowheart, but with the distance we had gained, I drank a potion of angelic slumber to get myself back into godslaying form. Lazelle, the absolute hero, stood guard and fended off the approaching Necromites. Turns out Merkel has an attack that covers the entire arena, and he woke me right back up, wasting that very important potion and dashing my little bit of hope. The Necromites kept on feeding him, but I got brave enough to get close to him again and picked Aelin up. We're sitting ducks, but it may give Lazelle time to figure something out. Aelin was smart enough to distance herself so that we wouldn't get killed in the same swing, but the Necromites didn't let her have any reprieve. I really had to trust her though, because on my turn, I spent my actions throwing healing potions her way. Lazelle revived Shart, but in hindsight, I should have sent her much further away. I laid the hurt on as much as I could, while Lazelle got us another ally by bringing Astarian back. I was back to a full team, but they're all pretty hurt, and embarrassingly, I still hadn't figured out the whole Merkel's presence thing yet, so I still wasn't able to heal anyone except Aelin, who was just far enough away. I did my job as a paladin, though, tanking attacks and trying to heal my teammates. Lazelle and I got Astarian back in shape, and Shark gave us a Guardian of Faith to lend a hand. Shadowheart and I went down but I finally had Astarian back to do some damage, and he did as much as he could. Lazel, the Guardian of Faith, and Aelin tried, but yet again, Merkel healed the damage back. Then, I realized something. He's out of Necromites to heal him. He's out of allies in general, actually, and even though we're not all on our feet, we still have a full team. Lazel used a Dimension Door scroll to pull her and myself far from Merkel, and then Astarian blinded him with an Arrow of Darkness. Then, Aelin did the coolest thing ever. She pushed Shadowheart just far enough away from Merkel so that she would lose the bone chill debuff and she could actually be healed. I am so glad I put my faith in Aelin. Astarian brought Sharp back up to snuff and Lazelle got me back in the game. I finally had the advantage. I took my time to get everybody back to full health before rushing in, and once we were, I just rained down attacks on Merkel. He fought back, of course, but he didn't have anyone to hold his hand now, and we brought him to his stupid, non-existent knees. That's right, Kether bitch, we beat you. Didn't give in, we didn't give up, and we won. Fuck that guy. I know that fight lasted almost three pages of this script, but I wanted to make sure you guys felt the high highs and the low lows that came with it. I mean, it took me almost exactly an hour in real time to do it, so I felt both humbled and unstoppable after that. Isabel and Aelin reunited, Jahira agreed to come with us to Baldur's Gate, Shart learned about her past, and we all got some much needed sleep. Just because we overcame an insane hurdle does not mean we're done yet. Not even close, actually. We still have the longest, maybe most intense act of the game left. So let's not drag our feet. I destroyed the Gith Yankee waiting for me outside of the road to Baldur's Gate. Thanks, Voss, for the heads up. And then there was nothing stopping us from heading into Act 3. I got to enjoy the curse being lifted this time, and we left the Shadow Cursed lands better than we had found them. And there it is! The city of Baldur's Gate is just within our reach. My little team has come so far. I also forgot to mention I'm dating Lazelle. What can 
can I say? I like strong women. That night, we were ambushed by Orpheus's royal guard. Though Astarian got his shit pushed in, we bolted straight into the prison. We, of course, came to learn that our guardian is actually a mind flayer. And having played the game so many times at this point, I didn't make a big deal of it. We fought off the gith, and then I gave in to his suggestion to embrace partial seramorphosis. I mean, hey, I need to take any advantage I can get, right? I, uh... <laughs> I wasn't supposed to eat it, though. I, uh, I genuinely did not think that would be a problem. Well, even though we can't reuse it, at least it worked for me. We finally got to sleep, and when we woke up, Shart showed us her new hair. Very cool. Now look, guys, this video is much longer than I meant for it to be. So, like we did with Act 1, let's go through the highlights. Until our next big fight, at least. I punched Zenovia. Really funny. Didn't know you could do that. I killed this Mind Flayer. I had some fun at the circus. And after fighting the doppelgangers, I reached level 10. Remember, I can't beat the game until I'm at the max level of 12. Back to work, though. I killed the Stone Lord Thugs. I got bailed out of an arrest by some gnomes who were compensated in murder, which made me lose my oath, and I just figured I'd embrace the whole being an Oathbreaker thing. I got the Orphic Hammer to keep Lazel happy, I killed more doppelgangers in Danthalon's basement, and even though Gortash destroyed my frame rate, I decided it would be in everyone's best interest if I worked with him. Then it was finally time to enter the city. I kind of wish there was a cutscene that showed you walking into the city, even if just for editing purposes, but uh, we're here! I got us a room at the Elf Song Tavern, I killed some rats, killed some bigger, taller, more green rats, and then Orin revealed that she has kidnapped Halsin. Ah, uh, no! Oh, Halsin, what a travesty. I started solving the open hand temple murders and saw this cool ass cutscene for the first time. Damn, Astarian, didn't know you had that dog in you. Quick aside, he has really grown on me. Like him, Lazel, and Shadowheart are my core favorites now. I stopped Dolor from killing Figaro and Devella, and then that same night, I had an interesting encounter with Mintara. She wanted to read my mind, and I let her write in. She asked what I see in her, and when I saw the option for a lover, I thought we'd just have a cute little exchange. Like I said, I love strong women. When I said it though, I guess it automatically meant we were now dating and me and Lazel were through. Whoops. Hey, you know what? They're both great, and being with Minthara is fine by me. Though I just said Lazelle is in my core team, I figured I'd bring Minthara along in her place now. I didn't end up banging the Emperor, though I may have thought about it, and in the morning, my team battled Saravok. I defeated him pretty easily, which was nice, and then I beat Valeria to death. <laughs> Felt good, not gonna lie. While on the quest to kill Auntie Ethel, I reached level 11. I got sidetracked before I found the hag, though, and ended up going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Laroer Can. Roland solidified his spot on my good side forever by helping me out, and Aelin put that dude on a stretcher. <laughs> This scene is crazy. I got back on track though and killed Ethel, I think this time for good. Totally forgot about Vanra though. Sorry, kid. With those names under my belt, I thought it was time to take on Orin. Ball then tested me in his murder trial, and if you're not careful here, this weirdly red guy will kill your entire team. So you've gotta be quick in putting him down. And like my old lady would tell you, I'm nothing if not quick. Old lady means girlfriend, right? Oh my god. Thomas old lady mean wife? A, a mother, usually one's own, a wife. Okay, so, it gets, it's, so it's both? Yeah, let's just pretend that didn't happen. Then I stepped up to Orin, but unlike Ketherick, I had a plan this time. So, with the rune powder bomb and a rune powder barrel I stole from those gnomes earlier, I blew up most of them and myself. I had left Minthara and Astarian behind, so even though Shart and I both died here, we were still very much in this. We still had a really rough time finishing the fight, though. I kept Minthara out of it, though, which meant I could die as many times as I needed to. I mean, it's 600 gold every time it happens, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Eventually, though, it was Minthara herself who stepped in and knocked Orin into the abyss, which was just what I needed. Unfortunately, Halsin died in that explosion, so uh, sorry man. I wasn't done with big battles yet, because the next place we went was down under the Worms Rock Fortress to confront Anser. I approached Anser, and he and the Emperor had their little back and forth. I'm not here for lore though, I'm here for blood and XP. It's mostly XP. I won't get super into this fight because it took a good while, but we killed the Myrmidons fairly quickly and then Answer almost ended my run. I retreated and revived once again, and like Merkel, he wasn't able to take us all on his own. I wasn't at max level yet though, so the next place I visited was the Sharan Sanctuary that Shadowheart was meant to bring the artifact to. I left Minthara behind once again, and funny enough, I ended up beating the Sharans 3v like 20. Shark got to see her parents, but ultimately had to let 
let them die so that she could be free of Char. I was so close to level 12, so I went back into the city and killed the, I'm not even gonna try and say, the fish guys. And that was enough for me to finally make it to level 12. I was pretty much at max strength, and I could have gone straight to the end at this point, but I felt like I owed Astarian an end to his quest. So, against my better judgment, we made our way into Cazador's. We rolled right on through Cazador's little petting zoo, and I skipped the banter with these poor souls. I had one focus, and that was killing Astarian's master. <laughs> now, Look, I'm not always the sharpest crayon in the shed, so in hindsight, I should have left Astarian in camp. But, because I brought him, I put myself at a disadvantage immediately. And I didn't leave anyone outside of the fight, so I was all in whether I liked it or not. And I did not. The fight turned sour remarkably fast, and once again, it was Minthara who was able to escape with her life. When we came back for round two, I crept up and freed Astarian. That way, we were back at full strength. And you know what? Astarian did great. We knocked out Kazador, and then Astarian Astarian finished him off for real. No super vampire Astarian though, instead we freed the little vamplings and let them travel to the Underdark to live out the rest of their days. My companion's quests were complete, and I felt ready to officially conquer Honor Mode. I went to Gortash to show him Orin's Netherstone, and he scared the life out of me by testing my gangster. I thought I was gonna have to kill him, but it ended up fine. We traveled to the Morphic Pool, and with all three Netherstones we tried to take over the Absolute. It was too smart though, and it put Gortash down like a sick chihuahua. The Emperor pulled me out, but he made it clear that we need a Mind Flayer to take this thing down. I was planning on working with Orpheus when I had Lazelle, but she's not around anymore, so I don't really see any reason to. The Emperor took a bite of the Gith Yankee, and we had all we needed to beat the brain. The hard part now is getting to it. Or, that's what I thought at least. I pretty much snuck my whole way to the brain, only stopping to fight a few enemies. That meant I didn't really spend any resources, and I was more than prepared for the final fight. I scaled the brain stem, and the Absolute roasted me and the gang, but I wasn't letting some disembodied loser get the best of me. I took my first round to summon some allies, not because I was planning on fighting for long, but because I needed them to take the heat off my team. The Emperor reached the brain pretty quickly, and I helped him out by throwing a globe of invulnerability up around him. That way, even if the enemies wanted to attack him, they couldn't possibly do anything. Then it was a simple matter. The portal was opened, and we flooded in as quick as we could. Funny enough, the Absolute isn't really that much of a threat when you reach its core. It was a thunderous smite from myself that finished the job, and with that attack, I I had successfully taken down Honor Mode. As we watch the end, I just want to say how I feel about this whole experience. Baldur's Gate 3 is such an amazing game, and I think that Honor Mode is one of the best ways to go through it. Not just because finishing it feels rewarding, which it does, but because in Honor Mode you have to think. You have to plan, plot, and use every tool at your disposal to make it. I used potions, elixirs, and strategies that I may have otherwise thought of using, but never really had to use in the past. I learned that losing is okay. Okay and that if you're gonna lose, you damn well better get something out of it. If you enjoy Baldur's Gate 3 and haven't yet attempted Honor Mode, I highly recommend it. Maybe not for a first time playthrough, but for those who really want to experience it in the most real and anxiety pumping of a way as possible. Honor Mode was a really cool time, and it took both longer and shorter than I thought. I had a nice little epilogue, and even though things didn't end perfectly, that's kind of the point. You make choices, and you live with them. For better or worse, the ending you get is about every little decision you made along the way. Folks at home, thank you so much for watching. I really thought this was going to be a 20 minute video, but judging from the 21 page script, I think I have at least doubled that. Like I said before, if you haven't given it a shot yourself, you absolutely should. I mean, hey, myself and over a hundred thousand other people could do it, I'm sure you can too. Oh, I almost forgot to ask, did anyone guess it would be five attempts? I sure as hell didn't. That's it for me. If you had fun, then you should like and subscribe, because I torture myself like this fairly often. Thank you again for watching. GG's everybody. <laughs> it won't be long before I come knocking at your door. Ta-ta for now.